Howdy, eggs. Welcome to Aggie Growth Hacks, the podcast sponsored by the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M, where we help ags improve their business, connect with other Aggie entrepreneurs, and support one another. I'm your host, Greg Martin, Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 2001. And I'm your co-host, Chris Hunter, Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 1998. Well, we got a little story for you, ags. Scott Holler, a Class of 2003, is the managing partner of Venn Technology. Scott and his team built the 23rd fastest growing Aggie-owned company in 2020, and I would say that he is a master culture builder. His company has won numerous awards that validate this, but the pride that I hear in his voice when he talks about the team speaks volumes to me. So pass it back and listen up to Scott as he shares some good bull. Well, Scott, welcome to Aggie Growth Hacks. Thank you for making the trip down from Dallas this morning. I hope the drive was amazing, and we are just here. Happy to have you on the podcast, but happy to celebrate your Aggie 100 win. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And you know what? Um, this is probably the first time in 40 years of living in Texas that 35 was actually smooth. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, so, so construction's so finally done. Today, today, you know, <laughs> we're starting off, we're starting off strong. So. Right. That's awesome. Well, welcome, welcome home. Welcome back. Uh, we all love Texas A&M. We love being in College Station. We love walking on the campus, seeing everybody, just the sights and the smells. You live in Dallas now. Yep. What do you miss about being a student at A&M? I, that list is <laughs> a mile long. I would say um, I was really involved on campus. I was in a whole bunch of different organizations and the the fun and the fellowship and the camaraderie that we had, you know, getting to hang out without a whole lot of responsibility. Um, I would have been young again. That's hey. that's probably what I missed the most. And and life isn't life is just different now. Right. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate. We've got a lot of, a lot of Aggie friends that, uh, that are up in the Metroplex and we get to see them quite a bit. So, uh, we, we try to keep it going as best as we can. Love it. Love it. So, you know, all entrepreneurs have a story, right? We have, we, we have our stories about our, our entrepreneurial journey and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's one of my favorite things about Aggie growth hacks is that I get to talk to so many entrepreneurs. So, with that in mind, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about Venn Technology, and how did you start that? What is it? What do you do? And, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so just kind of some of the backstory. I, um, my father was the CEO of a software company. Business has kind of been in, in the blood. Entrepreneurship has kind of been in the blood. Um, I can vividly remember sitting in a classroom in Wayner one day, there was a guest speaker that had come in and spoken in an upper level marketing class. And she talked about the freedom and the flexibility that she had in running her own business. And from that moment, like it just clicked for me. I don't know what it's going to be, but someday I'm going to work for myself. Nice. And, uh, it took a long time to figure out what that was going to be. My career is very twisty and turny. Um, my my ideal job coming out of school, I wanted to go work for uh, either the Richards Group in Dallas or GSDNM. Wanted to go to a big big agency, and it just it didn't work out. Um, but uh, did a number of things running up to starting my company, and uh, I will tell you that faith played a huge component. Um, mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time in prayer and seeking wise counsel from other people and we would not be here if it weren't for the favor um, that, that we've been blessed with so um, as a company you know it's interesting you, you have to be willing to flex and pivot when I started the company I would have told you that we were a salesforce.com consulting firm that did some integration work Today, I would tell you we're an integration firm that does some Salesforce work. Salesforce is a big, important part of what we do today for sure, but almost all of our Salesforce work comes by way of us finding a, finding ourselves in an integration project where getting that data back and forth is is critical. From from one system to integrating into Salesforce or whatever? Yeah, so um, the bulk of our work revolves around a mid-market accounting system called Sage Intact. And almost everybody needs that system to integrate with some other system, whether it's Salesforce or Stripe for credit card processing or Shopify for e-commerce. Um, let me be clear, among the top 10 happiest days of my life, somewhere around nine or 10, 
are the days I finished managerial and financial accounting in college. Um, uh, Mrs. Showmaker and Mrs. Allen, thank you for letting me get out with, with C's. I was not a C student, uh, but I could not have been happier. But have mercy on me. And, and my parents weren't mad either, so that was a, that was a plus. Um, so we don't actually implement the accounting system. We're just really good at getting the data in and out. Gotcha. That, that's great. Well, as you have grown your company, how – when did you found the company and then really how can we celebrate you as one of the fastest growing Aggie entrepreneurs? Is there, is there one point that you can say that there was a, a tipping point that you really kind of pushed you into super growth mode? Yeah. Um, so I started the company in January of 2015. Um, we're coming up on seven years and nice. I, I just, I, I can't believe that we're this far into it. And, and I'll, let me go back for just a second to one of the things that people in that year of seeking wise counsel before I went off on my own, one of the things that just kept coming up is why, why, why do this now? You're, I guess I was 32, 33, like you're, you're young. Why don't you get a little bit more experience? One of the things that kept going through my mind was, okay, where would I be five years from now if I start today versus if I wait five years, you know, it's, it's going to take a long time. So anyway, looking back, glad I did it when I did it. Um, there's never a good time to start a business. We just had our third child. And so wow. um, anyway, n never a good time to do it. But um, coming up on seven years, you asked about kind of that turning point when did it click that hey this is this is going like this we had um really solid big growth chunks the first several years and when you're smaller it's it's easier to have 60 70 80 100 percent year over year growth um but but that that moment for me was i think probably going into our fourth year we could see that next year we can break a million bucks in revenue and uh -huh. like that that just that was that was mind-blowing to me that you know i started in my home office yeah. and now i've got a handful of employees and we could do over a million dollars in revenue and so that um so special that that was that was amazing and i can still remember the day that like that 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 last check hit the bank and it's like oh my gosh that's unbelievable we did it yeah and and so um that that was that was probably that that aha moment of hey this is like really going somewhere and it's just been you know up and up and up from there that's awesome scott tell me about you know we we as entrepreneurs always have challenges i mean that you wake up and there's a challenge face right in front of you what so far has been your biggest challenge that you faced and how have you hacked your way through that yeah that there are plenty of challenges running a business. Cash flow is the one that that was the biggest hurdle in the earlier days. And as I talked about a minute ago, as we got bigger, that that really smoothed itself out. I mean, you, you still think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, without a doubt, the biggest challenge that we have right now is hiring talent. Um, being in the technology space, there is an insatiable appetite for automation and for well-implemented systems, mm -hmm. and there's just not enough good people to, to go around. And so if you're listening to this and uh, you're interested in a consulting job in the technology space, please call. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of openings right now. So how are you, what are you and Venn Technology doing in order to attract those to, to bring those because that's something that we hear from yep. every entrepreneur across the board y y finding the right people to work for you yeah it's so difficult so what are you doing in order to attract them yeah so um a couple of years after starting the business somebody that I, I would consider a mentor was talking to me about the founder of their company and the early days of, of their business and as soon as he spoke the words, it clicked for me that it was the perfect articulation of what I'd been thinking. And so um, I've adopted this as my own. I'm taking credit for it now. Um, <laughs> I, I have set out to build the kind of company that I want to work for. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the kind of company that a lot of other people want to work for, too. Um, we, we don't we don't compete against the the big global consulting firms. We don't compete against the Accentures and Deloitte's and Capgeminis of the world. Um, but 
we, and we work at kind of the lower end of the market, small, mid-size um, organizations. And so I, I think that, you know, what we are doing to really try to attract that talent is providing a great culture, providing a great work environment. Um, last week we acquired a building, bought a building. Congratulations. Um, That's cool. And so, uh, we're already ping pong tables, nap it, pods, <laughs> exactly. ball, cereal bars, kegerator. Oh, and, kegerator. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I was yeah. at number one. Man, I yeah. Work for you. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this move that we'll be making here in a few weeks because we're going to now have our own space to further create our culture and, and make it a lot of fun. Well, obviously, you're doing something right. Not only is shown from the Aggie 100, uh, your revenue is continuing to grow, but congratulations on the Dallas Business Journal. You just got an award this yeah. week. What, what was yeah. that? So um, we, we've actually got a couple of awards this year. Um, we made the Inc. 5000 list for the first time this year, and, and we came in at number 932. When I got the rankings, I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're – we're in the top 1,000. We're in the top 20%. There you go. That, that was kind of a wow moment. Um, and then we also, kind of going back to the culture, we we made Dallas Business Journal best places to work in North mm. Texas. And so um, having said that, as special and important as, as those are, um, making the Aggie 100 list is like, yeah. for me, that that's the one that means the most. And uh Excited to celebrate with our team tonight. Two of the other folks on the leadership team are, are coming down for the event, and um, they're also Aggies. And anyway, um, it just – this is – I can't even begin to say how special this is. Well, Scott, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do the impossible because – I'm going to ask you to look into the future. Okay. And that's, that's difficult for anyone. Yep. Sure. For a technology company. Mm-hmm. Get the crystal ball out. Right? <laughs> that, that things yeah. are going to change in three days. <laughs> What do you see, you know, based on your experience, what do you see changing in your world, in your your part of the technology world? And yeah. then what are you and Venn Technology doing in order to capitalize on that? So starting probably kind of the early, mid-2000s, there was a, a major shift in technology moving things to the cloud. Everybody's familiar with that over, overused term. But... Um, Part of what happened when when that shift was made was that systems that only the big big you know Fortune 500 could afford started becoming available to smaller organizations, mm-hmm. and um, the the amount of easier to use, easier to implement automated technology is is just getting better and better every day, and it's becoming. Uh, available and affordable at a price point that small and mid-sized organizations can uh, can can stomach, and so I I think that the the, the technology itself may change, but there's still tons and tons and tons of runway for mm-hmm. organizations looking to to automate and improve um, you know how they how they manage their business. Yeah, and and you know technology moves fast, right? I mean it it, it that's just the simple. Me- you know, fact of the matter there is that it it moves super fast. Salesforce does three releases a year. You got to stay on top of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Intact does four releases a year. You got to stay on top of that. We do a lot of our work through this middleware platform. It's kind of the plumbing that gets the data across and they change things seems like every week. And so (laughs) we're we're constantly on our toes trying to, um, uh, you know, keep up with it. And, and with it, People that work in our organization are naturally um, eager to learn and they are tech curious. And so digging through release notes when something comes out, it's kind of fun for them Um, looking for, oh, my gosh, so and so was asking me about this last week. Now we can do it. And so. Um, yeah, that's what I think when I look at financials, <laughs> that's probably not what you think when you look at financials, man, that's a good looking balance sheet. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, the, the technology that we may be working with, uh, two years, five years tomorrow, may be completely different than what we're doing today. But, uh, I, I think that there will be continue to be plenty of opportunity in, in our space. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you said it earlier that that you started out at Salesforce, you know, uh, 
that does integration, but now you're an integration company that, that just happens to do sales. Yeah. And you know, there could be some other pivot down the road that yeah. is not even on my radar today and right. in nimble. We, one of the things that we've seen, uh, this year, there's, there's a little bit more competition coming into our niche and we are going out and expanding our, our offering around financial type integrations into some other technology ecosystems. And so, you know, we're, we're going to have to adapt as, as things change and look for new ways to, to yeah. expand. That's cool. So changing gears a little bit here, um, you know, every, every company has to have that vision, mm -hmm. right? And we talk about it a lot here on the Aggie Growth Hack uh, podcast is, is that, you know, every entrepreneur should have a big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you know, three, five, 10 year moonshot, right? What, what is your BHAG? So a lot of people are going to say, we want to be a hundred million dollar company. We were mm -hmm. going to have, we're going to be multinational. We're going to be, I don't know that I can put mine in that kind of a, a box. Um, for me, going back to I want to create the kind of company I want to work for I want to make sure that we are still that company when we get to 10 million when we get to 20 million when we get to 50 million wow. and you know one of the things that that I love is that I I have I have the ability to choose my clients just as my clients choose me and there have certainly been times where we're looking at a project and going, eh, I don't know if we should do this. I don't know if we're a good culture fit to work with them. In fact, that's, that's the biggest one, deciding if we can do what they need to do. That, that's easy. But we, we ask ourselves with each deal, okay, is this somebody that I want to work with? And I, in my position today, have the ability to say, hey, this is somebody that we're actually not going to work with. We had a situation this week. Um, employee had a major family emergency and needed to cancel a meeting. And so my admin reached out and the response back was, well, that's very disappointing. We had so many people lined up for this meeting. And I'm like, you know what? You're not our kind of customer. Yep. Hmm. And so I hope that <clears throat> as we continue to grow, that we don't have to take every deal because we need the deal. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to continue to take the right deals. It's going to take a lot of clarity from right. your standpoint and yeah. the team yeah. and a lot of discipline, Yeah, you know, and setting expectations. So that's, I mean, but you're building the type of company you want to work for. And, and the people that we've hired, we share common values. And so I think my, my team has a pretty good sense for, Hey, this is, this is somebody that, you know, we probably don't want to take on. In fact, we, we use Salesforce internally and whenever you mark a deal as lost, you have to put in a reason why. Yeah. And one of our lost reasons is Scott said no. And um, so it's it's always on the table and not every not every good deal is a good deal. So we're gonna roll right into the lightning round. Okay. So here are five quick questions that we need answers minute or less on each one. What is your favorite hack, Scott? This could be a business hack. It could be a personal hack. What's something we can learn from you? Um, I like control. Um, and that may be part of the reason I started a company. It was so hard for me to give things up and let other people take things. And when I finally got comfortable delegating and uh, just trusting that they can do as good a job, if not better than I can, and them taking that off my plate means I can go do X, Y, and Z. It, it, it's been a multiplier. So I, I would say that, um, you know, learning to let go and, and delegating out. Love it. Yeah. And that's almost 100% of the entrepreneurs that we've yeah. talked with, you know, 40 plus or whatever it's been. Well, uh, in, in my first few years, I wanted to, I wanted to yep. hold it all. When I hired my first consultant, I was very reluctant to let him take stuff and, the reality was, like I said, he could do it just as good, if not better than I can. And, and we wouldn't be where we are today if we hadn't been shifting things oh, around. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question. What is the absolute best advice that you've ever been given? I, you know, I keep I keep coming back to this. And, and it came from that that moment where somebody spoke to me and said, yeah, they, they wanted to create the kind of company they wanted to work for. And, you know, everything that we do really kind of revolves around that. And so. Um, 
having having that just core to who we are as an organization, it guides so much of what we do. Scott, what is your superpower? Um, I I'm going to throw one out that I don't think is um, something that a lot of people would say. I I think mine is empathy. Um, looking around at my team and just hey, so and so didn't seem right today, and being able to pull them aside and say. What can I do? How can I help? Um, it 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 deepens the commitment and and knowing that that people care about you at work. I think that's really huge. That's pretty cool. Well, I, that's that's why you are building the type of company that you want to be because you can't do that without empathy. Yeah, no, absolutely that's not. So, next question: What gets you out of bed and gets you excited about your business? So, I got to go back to a moment about three or four months ago, every Monday morning, we have a, a meeting with the whole company. Um, there's 15, 16 of us right now. And we'd, we'd actually just hired a couple people. Every Monday morning, we, we do a project review, we go through all of our active projects, how are we doing? How's the relationship? Are we getting our stuff done? Um, and I looked around the room after these people had started. And like, just thinking back to one person in his home office seven years ago and now today there's 15 families that that are um you know this this is where you know this is how they pay their mortgage this is how they put food on the table getting to be a part of that is just it it it, it gives me chills to think about well, scott i'm gonna ask a question that, that we don't have have on our list I'm, I'm really curious what are the core values that you are building your company around so our number one value is one team. And I think that there, there are a lot of environments and, and a lot of environments in the consulting world that you got to step on somebody. You, you, need to, you need to do something so that you can further your career. Mm -hmm. And we talk all the time about one team, one team. Nobody, nobody wins over somebody else. We all win together. We all lose together. And, and I think that that has created a tremendous amount of cohesion. Well, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for being, I mean, you're very open and honest with, with your past and in the experience that you've had and, and focused on how to build that team together and have that one team. How can Aggie entrepreneurs or Aggie entrepreneurs get in touch with you? Yeah, so uh, website is just ventechnology.com. Uh, that's technology singular, not plural. Uh, although we probably should buy the other two. Um, uh, so you can find us out there and then uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. And um, we've also got uh, company channels out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and, uh, and LinkedIn and YouTube. Great. Well, thanks again so much for joining us, for making the drive down early. Absolutely. We are excited to celebrate with you tonight. Congratulations again on not only the Aggie 100 win, but, but all the other accolades that you've got. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. How about that, Ags? Was that some good bull or what? There's some valuable hacks that Scott shared with us. What was your favorite, Greg? Well, to me, the number one thing, it's Scott's all about culture. Yeah, yes, he is extremely technically proficient in his company. And I mean, with with what he does, he has to be. But it's all about culture. And what was that? What was that phrase that that he heard and then used uh, to build the type of company that he wants to work for? Yeah. And and that has allowed him not only to create a fast growing company that has won numerous awards, but is it's a company that is able to compete for highly technical, expensive talent in way you know can, when he's competing against the big boys that he just doesn't have the deep coffers like that they do so that was so cool we, we talk about culture being important a lot but you know he really lives it what about you no i 100 percent agree with you on that one i think that's so cool um my hack was easy you know get stuff off your plate learn to delegate right <laughs> yeah i mean he he talked about that and and as an entrepreneur, I am right there with them, 100%. I'm, I, you know, I have the tendency, and, and most entrepreneurs have the tendency to, you know, just jump right into things, right? And and just, I mean, that's just how we're built, right? We we're like, okay, let's get it done. Let's let's figure it out. Let's get it done, right? So, yeah. to know, and 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 that's where he said that that's where that kind of tipping point was when when he started getting things off of his plate, right? And started delegating and and learning how to hire that talent. Right. 
uh, and, and get things completely off of his plate, that's when he really started to grow. So I think that's, that's super, super important and needs to be the forefront of just about every single entrepreneur out there listening. Yeah. It's so easy to say, so hard to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess that's going to do it for another episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. And we also hope that you connect with Scott. We, we also want to connect with you on LinkedIn, Instagram, or join the Aggie Growth Hacks Facebook group and to continue our conversation there. Chris and I would love to connect with you personally and maybe share your story on a future episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. Finally, be sure to check out our website, aggiegrowthhacks.com, where you can listen to previous episodes and check out some of our other great content. Aggie Growth Hacks was produced by fellow Aggies, Kyle Ackerman and Ben Wiggins with Podcast Architects. We also want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship at Texas A&M University. Since 1999, the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship has served as the hub of entrepreneurship for Texas A&M. If you're an Aggie entrepreneur or even a wantrepreneur, head over to their website to find a program that's right for you. Just search up the McFerrin Center for Entrepreneurship in Google and head over there right now. Join us next time when we connect with another great Aggie entrepreneur and learn how they hacked their growth. Until then, I'm Chris Hunter. And I'm Greg Martin. Thanks and gig them.